says the frame rate is dropped, you won't see them because that's only on this, on the screen, not on me. So you're probably looking at me right now. But we're going to get into it. It's a foot ad. Um, this is used for many FIFA enthusiasts, along with FootWiz. We use that as well. Um, ignore all of this bit up here. And this bit there. You don't really need to know that. This is more for the FIFA. Um, I have a list on this screen um, of the Full England squad, so I'll give you a quick rundown. And then we're going to talk about each position and why I think I'm going to put people there, or it's going to go through the formation that I think we will use. So, a quick introduction the Full England squad. We have reason is I don't think it will be Jack Portland. I don't think he'll be the first, even though he's got the most caps out of the three. He was part of Stoke who got relegated. You know, they didn't have a great defensive record. And although he has tournament experience, it wasn't good tournament experience at the end of the day. He still only has seven caps. John Pickford has two and Nick Pope has none. No one, none of the goalkeepers are experienced at all. Now there is an argument So, we'll play 
be there so that when um, Trippier was up, Catwalk was on the bush wide and then these became a back of four. It worked excellently in my opinion. And then, you know, later on as the game went on, you saw certain scenarios where that happened. Trippier swapped with Walker, Walker bombed on if they needed his pace, if they pinged a long ball across. You know, it's just easy, easy work for them two to be partnered together. I mean, they used to play together at Spurs. And then Walker transferred to Man City. It's a bit of a controversial one, but I personally can see it happening on a n f for a number of reasons. Right, the middle. Now, being a Chelsea fan, I don't actually like him. You might expect it. you might have expected me to say that I liked him then, but I don't. I don't like him as a centre back. He is nowhere near what John Terry was in terms of Chelsea and England. However, when he played against Nigeria. You know, he scored and he played very well. He, he bossed that defence. He really, really, really played well. I liked him. I liked the look of him. He's very experienced. I think he has, it says here, 58 caps. And the next highest is Walker with 34. So he's like, oh, 24 caps more than the rest of them. Well, more than Carl Walker. This is probably the least capped England squad for a very long time, but I hope it can, you know, do dividends. I think it's going to be great in the middle of the defence. You know, he's slower than Trippier. Well, in fact, we're going to put Walker back there because Trippier is probably going to be the wide man. And for that reason, we're going to move on to the next centre back and we're going to put in John Stones. Now he has come on leaps and bounds for Man City this season. He's another one of these players, a young full of pace, you know, he's tall, he's physical, and on the left-hand side of defence, I think he'll do excellently, whether it's Walker on the wing, and then Trippier and Stones, either side of Kale, or the other way around, if Kale needs to be that guy that, you know, goes forward and presses defences, uh, presses the attackers, Walker and Stones can drop back, and they've got the pace to cope with any, you know, runners, or any people that want to get in between defence or Walker and Stones can keep up with them. Same with Trippier. KL maybe not so much. That's why he either needs to drop back a little bit further and be the sweeper. Oops. Or he needs to be the presser and let these two deal with any runners. So, left wing back leaves us with two 
options. We can either go with Danny Rose or we can go with my option of Ashley Young. We saw him. Um, I think he started against Nigeria. It's actually really hard to whisper. Yeah, he started against Nigeria. Again, he's had an exceptional season at Man United. He seems to be one of the players that nobody likes him because of the way he plays and what he does with him for never very good at Man United. I was one of those people that really wondered why he was still there and why he was playing left wing. You know, and it doesn't seem to be doing that good. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he seems to be one of the better players in the Man United squad and in the England squad, what I saw. He looked very good. So this could be our, you know, defence and goalkeeper next. Admit, I like the way it played against Nigeria. We played very well. Defensively, we were okay, other than that one chance. Um, Iwobi scored. You know, the second half wasn't as good. The first half was very good, like, really. I was surprised at how well we played. Um, that leaves then on the bench. I think we don't need. To, I don't, I'm going to put it this way. If it's not Cahill in the middle, like the B. Phil Jones. Come on. Where are you? Where will be Harry Maguire? No. It'll be Harry Maguire. Yes. Um he is deserved of a place in the England squad. Phil Jones. Probably, maybe not. I didn't really watch too much Man United. I didn't really watch too much football last season, if I'm being totally honest. But I know that quite a few surprisingly good players arose. Um, yeah, so that leaves on the reserves. I'm just going to fill these in. Like, any any of the players throughout the whole bench can be placed on either the bench or reserves, in, a, in, in my opinion. Um, so we have Danny Rose. Now, he, he is probably the most likely to also be included in one of the squads or in, in place of Young because it'll either be him or Rose depending on who Southgate chooses and then obviously Trent Alexander-Arnold where are you? there you are, Trent Alexander-Arnold another player capable of playing where should be a place if it's a pace that we need I'd go with Young, Stones, Walker, Trippier, uh, Alexander-Arnold, sorry, not Trippier, maybe Trippier instead of Cahill, and play Walker or Stones, Central. Either way, that's looking like, a, like an okay defence, it's not amazing. Now, there has been a lot of speculation about the midfield in England, with the likes of John Joe Shelby not getting in, the likes of Wilshire not being chosen, um, the likes of Delph and Loftus-Cheek. agree with Southgate and his decisions and if I'm being totally honest Loftus-Cheek is a great player you know for the future he has two caps that's it if we want someone like that coming into our squad in a few years time he needs to get experience with the likes of Trippier you know Stones, Walker, Young even Pickford 
that we can choose from is Deli Ali, Delph, Dyer, Henderson, Lingard and Loftus Cheek. So we've added Ali and Lingard already. These are two very similar players. They're both sort of small, quick, great with the ball, great dribbling, you know, have, have a decent shot on them. Very creative minded players. But we need someone in the middle that's sort of like a rock. Sort of like it can bring the team together, you know. This this centre mid is in the middle of all of these players, all of the team other than the goalkeeper. He is directly in front of all of these, or like linked with them. So we need someone that's, you know, got that experience. You've got that sort of level headedness that can dictate the tempo. I think this will be a similar setup as to what I've chosen is because Lingard's used to playing as a winger and if it needs to be without making any substitutions Henderson can become like a left centre mid role Ali a centre centre mid role Lingard can go left wing and then these two can split off into a striker and a right wing and the reason for that is because my first striker I'm going to choose is Sterling you know, he's had an exceptional season for Manchester City. He hasn't had as big as an impact for England in recent years as maybe he needed to. However, I think this is one of the tournaments where he needs to show his class in terms of an England player rather than just a City player. City have had an outstanding season and given the due, they've done nothing wrong. So, we just need the players that they have in the England squad to also perform on an international level. Now, the last strike we're going to choose is a pretty obvious one. It's the captain. It is Harry Kane. And we'll choose his World Cup card. Now, I'm going to do a bit of an explanation as to what I believe Harry Kane brings. So, first of all, he's an exceptional striker. I believe he's our best player in the squad. Second of all, I think he's the perfect option to choose as a captain. Now, many, many, 
many of you may disagree and understandable. You know, there's many arguments for the captain to be, you know, middle of the centre backs or someone with experience such as Henderson and Cahill. Maybe even the likes of a goalkeeper because they can see the whole pitch. However, I'm going to put it to you this way. If you are a centre back and you have all these defensive duties and you're also the captain and you've got all these leadership qualities that make you a good captain, how much pressure are you going to feel walking out onto the pitch knowing that you're the centre back? If you slip up, the other team score a goal. same amount of leadership qualities. You're Henderson, you still have the same amount of leadership qualities, but you're not named captain. Nothing changes, you still have them qualities. You still know how to talk to people, you're still a centre back, you still know how to dictate. I mean the professional footballers. You don't have that pressure put on you as the captain. It's as simple as that. Stones, Gale, Walker, Trippier, Young, Henderson, the goalkeeper. You don't have them pressures put on you to be the captain. All you need to do is focus on how you play football. Okay, yo, he knows how to boss the defence around. He knows how to tell people to stay straight, to stay in line. Henderson, he's in the middle of the field. He knows how to tell Ali and Lingard to either push forward or stay back. He knows how to ping a ball into Harry Kane. He knows how to tell the defence to push up, to come back, to follow someone. He, he's got all them qualities still. He's just not the captain. Harry Kane, best player on the field by far. I mean, it's obvious. He's like, there's no one that comes close to him in the England squad, other than maybe Sterling. He has no pressure. He's a striker. He's a striker that's been named captain. That's it. That's all it is. He doesn't need leadership qualities. All he needs to do is turn up. If he scores a few goals, he's the captain that scores goals. End of. If he doesn't score any goals, that falls to Sterling. Vardy or Rashford. Who else on the field? Lingard, Ali. Maybe even Kale. Kale scored the other day. The captain's armband doesn't make you the best player on the team. Your qualities do. And the way you play football. That is what's made Kane the captain. As simple as that. His qualities on the football field. The ability to score, the ability to be physical. Yes, there's an argument that the captain needs to be someone that can around because everyone looks to the captain but everything that happens in today's football if anything happens where the captain is called upon such as the referee plays his whistle and says captain come here no matter what position on the field you are you're still gonna have to go to the referee and this, the, the game's still gonna be stopped nothing's gonna occur where Kane can't be in a goal scoring opportunity because he's captain the same way that nothing's going to happen defensively if Kale's was the captain. I, I just think it's the team is a whole team, it's not an individual player. To give Kale the captaincy would mean that he maybe his ego gets to him. He thinks I've beat John Stones and I've beat Henderson to the captaincy, I'm in charge. Easy to like, bosses people around. Henderson doesn't like that because he thinks he should be leading. Vice versa, if Henderson gets it, Kaya was like, well, I'm not listening to him. Just because just he captains Liverpool doesn't mean I can't do my job and off. I'm not listening to him. Giving it to Kane, both of them go, huh. well, well, we'll do our jobs. We'll let Kane get on with it. Simple. That was my reasoning as to why Kane has been named and is deserved of captain. That was a bit of a rant, I know, but listen to what I'm saying. If you don't agree with me, let me know why. I might be missing something completely obvious. But that leaves the likes of... Shamey Ovardi and Rashford on the bench. Now, both of these players have their own merits as to why they're on the bench and not on the squad. And then last of all is this guy that doesn't even belong to be at the World Cup. Welbeck. I think that is the worst choice. Anyone could have gone better than Welbeck. Anyone, literally, I. If, if, I reckon if there's a poll out there where it says take Luke Clements in charge of the Ace Club on YouTube channel or Danny Welbeck to the World Cup, I think I'd win. If I'm being totally honest, I don't think he deserved of it at all. He hasn't done anything. That's just my opinion. So he can stay on the reserve bench and he can not come onto the pitch. 
scenario. But these two. Now these are on the bench for different reasons. I think Jamie Vardy is a much better super sub at an international level. I think that if you see the squad that we've got, if the manager at the time decides we need some more physical up front, take off Sterling and put Vardy up. Because then we've got Harry Kane who's a very physical player, Sterling is not as physical. But we've also then got Jamie Vardy who's a very, very physical player. That's two physical players and one page merge in Jamie Vardy himself. Excellent. If you know the manager, Gareth Southgate, I couldn't remember his name, there we go. Gareth Southgate decides, you know what, this pace is absolutely troublesome in the likes of Lingard, Ali and Sterling. For these defenders, they can't keep up with them. Kane, come off mate, you've done your job, you've captained the side so far. Vardy, up you go, or Rashford, on you go, you've got absolutely bags of pace. Fuck with the defence, go for it mate, why not? Easy as you like. Obviously it's not as easy as that, because otherwise we'd win every World Cup. But I think they're the thoughts behind that. And why them two on the bench? I don't think Rashford deserves to start unless he then goes, actually Sterling, you go wide. Kane in the middle. Lingard come off of a rest. We'll put Rashford on. And then you have Rashford, Kane, Sterling. And then Ali and Henderson in the middle. Or Dyer and Henderson in the middle to make it a little bit more defensive. Or he says, you know what, actually Young, you go left wing. <laughs> We'll go to a back four, something like that. I think what he's chosen for this World Cup is a lot of versatility. Because every team that we're going to come up against is different. If we come up against Portugal, we know that they haven't got a brilliant defence. But they've got a very strong attack, five at the back. Pace merchants up front, fuck with the defence. Contain Ronaldo, and you're done. If we come up against Argentina, we know that they've got a solid squad. We need our best, most experienced players on the pitch. So Kane, Henderson, Dyer, Gale, Walker, you're all on the pitch. If we come up against Germany, you know, attack's not so good this year. From what I've seen, I mean, I know they've got Werner, they've left out Sane, but they've got the likes of Royce, injury prone. You've got the likes of Werner and Bellarabi, I think it's going, someone along those lines. You know, they can have wingers, you've got the likes of Muller, but they haven't got that many pacey players, I don't think. I haven't really checked, so I could be completely wrong with this. But we know that they've got a solid defence. Okay, let's take three up front. Let's take Kane, Sterling and Lingard or Rashford or someone along those lines. And it will be perfect. Mess with their defence. We don't need to focus too much on defending, although we do, because they're a great squad, don't get me wrong. And these are just hypothetical situations. Anyway, getting sidetracked, so I'll see you later, guys. Let me know your opinions on this and my thoughts. I think the bit at the end about the Germany and the Brazil 